Hello all, Cameron Gano with Loot Press here on the line with rising country music sensation and West Virginia native Kate Boytek, who will be headlining the Fall Y'all Festival in St. Albans this weekend. Kate, thanks so much for taking the time. Good morning, Cameron. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Suppose we can dive right in here. We've got shows coming up, and um, it's my understanding you've been performing since you were quite young. Uh, after all yeah. this time, um, do you still get a touch of the pre-show jitters, or is it sort of automatic for you at this point to just be able to go out and perform? Well, I think you always get a little bit jittery if you truly care about your performance, just because you never know what's going to go wrong. I mean, it could sure. rain, it could, you could trip, you could, you know, anything. Forget your lyrics, even if you sang the song for 10 years. Right. So I think just the... Um, wanting to provide the audience with the best show possible just gives you like a natural you know jittery feeling at first but you know other than that we just you know me and my band we we've been doing it for so long now that after that phase within the first couple songs we just go for it and you know i kind of have the mentality of if i forget the lyrics or anything like that um you know, I'm just human. So I'll either ask the audience for help or I'll shrug it off and laugh and go on and, you know, it moves forward either way. <laughs> sure. Those are a lot of the coolest moments in music, the the quote unquote mistakes. Give it character. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. It can definitely build character. <laughs> and uh, you came from a musical family, right? I did. Yeah, my, um, my whole family grew up playing and singing in church. My grandma was in a traveling um, choir for a little while. And that's where I started. Uh, when I was about five years old, I started uh, singing in church with my great-grandmother. She played guitar. And uh, it just kind of went from there. Uh, all my uncles played music. My mom, she wrote songs. And she also sang in her early 20s and did local competitions and things like that. So it's just always been there, you know, at all the family reunions and all the holidays and all those things. And we just grew up with it. It just very much became a part of everyday life. That's awesome. I um I recently interviewed Ben of the Brothers Comatose. They're a band out west. They played Mountain Stage over the summer, and he was saying that he and his brother came up in that sort of environment. Uh, folks always just kind of strumming guitars, harmonizing to yep. old songs together, and um that's such an interesting dynamic. How do you think being exposed to music in that way from a young age affected your development as an artist? And do you think you would have arrived at being a singer songwriter otherwise without all that exposure? I don't know that I would have necessarily without all the exposure and all the um, support. There's always so much support from my family of like, you know, if that's your dream and that's what you want to do, then, you know, we're, we've got your back. And they're like that to this day. So I definitely think that that influenced me into being able to feel super confident in my choice of career and, you know, really pursuing it at the level that I have been. Um, you know, growing up in the music, in the music family, just makes it so much more comfortable. It doesn't feel foreign at all. Like, right. And everybody likes different types of music, so I think it really, like everyone in my family, and I think it really gave me an opportunity to explore not just one route. So that has definitely affected the type of music that I write and the type of music that I like to perform, um, you know, just based on all those different genres and constantly being exposed to different styles and things like that. It's great to have that support because... There's sort of the parental instinct to to protect your kids and like try to get them to avoid taking that sort of a riskier path because it's a tough industry. Obviously, get the the, oh, yeah. the safe job. Sure. My, my mom was like, "Let's go!" Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Time, you know, and it's it's kind of like this. We all have the mentality of it. You know, we're going to give it all we've got. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm still going to do music. You know, no matter what scale it's on, I'm Absolutely. still always going to have music in my life. So. Either way, it's a win-win. You can't really go wrong when, when you approach it like that. You've got such a distinct voice, really strong vocal. Uh, who are some of the singers that inspired you the most? Is there anyone maybe you pulled inspiration from early on when shaping your sound? Well, thank you first for the compliment. That was very nice. Um, my mom listens to a lot of uh, Fleetwood Mac, so Stevie Nicks was definitely an influence. Mm. She listens you know, she was doing the cassette tape karaoke when I was five <laughs> and six years old. And <laughs> we had everybody from Whitney Houston to Trisha Yearwood, um, you know, to, to practice to. So all of those types of artists and, and, you know, those 90s country singers and things like that were really influential in how I developed my sound early on. 
and you're also a songwriter. This is always a fun one. What's uh, because it's different for everybody. Just about what is your your process like? I I know not long ago you'd mentioned you were starting out on uh, learning an instrument. Has that changed the way you approach writing? Are you lyrics first? Do you try to do music first, or is there even a process? It's it's pretty wild. I leave it open for myself, so I don't really have a very specific process. Right. I've had it to where I think of the melody and then the lyrics come after. I've had it to where <clears throat> I only ever get the lyrics and I have to try to build a melody around it. And then I've had it to where I get both at the same time and they just come together. And then I've had it come to me in dreams. <laughs> and I wake up and I try to make sense of it at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Those are the good ones that the the melody and lyric and just everything kind of falls in your lap together. It's like oh, it came. Yeah. It's like it came from somewhere else. Those are typically like when they come together like that. Those are typically end up being my favorite songs. Yep. Usually, <laughs> that's the good stuff. Uh, you've been at this a while, but uh, you've been rubbing shoulders with some big names. Do you ever find yourself still in situations where you're legitimately like starstruck? All the time. All the time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have such a, um, just a, I, I kind of approach all those situations like, you know, like fangirl in a way. Like, I mm-hmm. just played with Dom and Rio, and I'm so grateful for the opportunities, truly. Like, I, I truly appreciate being able to meet these people that I grew up, you know, listening to and, and idolizing. And, you know, like meeting them, I even told the guitar player, I said, I'm trying super hard to not fangirl right now, but it's <laughs> difficult. My inner 14 year old is going nuts. <laughs> I sort of have, in my line of work, I have to conduct myself to, like, talk to people who are, like, quote-unquote important or whatever. I remember I met Steve Earle, and I was a mess. I met Steve Earle, too. I couldn't pull it together. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure before I even told him my name, I offered to give him a hug. I was like, can you sign my CD? And I'm supposed to be a professional. As a listener, are you generally strictly a country music fan, or are there some artists in the library that maybe might surprise some people? Oh, Lord, I have I have zero one strict route in that area. Um, I'm all over the place. I listen to '80s, '70s, '60s, 1940s music. Mm. Um, everywhere from Billy from Billy Holiday all the way up um, to Blue Combs. Like I could keep you here for hours. I don't have any restrictions in those areas. That's the way to be, especially as a creative and a writer. You're pulling from so many different places that it kind of ensures that your material doesn't get stale. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Is there any one artist you're stuck on right now in particular? Um, Right now, let me think. Try to think. Uh, I actually, so I'm I'm a mom, and my oldest daughter loves Sabrina Carpenter, Mm -hmm. so... I guess if you were to say what's being played in my vehicle right now, it's going to be Sabrina Carpenter. <laughs> you know, I enjoy it, but it's mostly at the hands of my 15 year old. <laughs> I have that. Uh, three kids, uh, like my Spotify wrapped comes out and it's like Beatles, Zeppelin, the Cars soundtrack. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine is like Bon Jovi, Kids Bop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar with. Uh, lightning round like the this or that style question format i think so i'm pretty sure i'm sure i'm sure i've heard it before essentially i'll present uh two options and you just kind of uh give one and we'll go on to the next one beatles or rolling stones beatles acoustic or electric oh that's hard (laughs) (laughs) oh and if you want to pass that's fine i'm gonna have to go with the electric Hank Sr. or Hank Jr.? Hank Sr. I'm a Hank Sr. guy myself. <laughs> uh, Tom Petty, <laughs> Bruce Springsteen. Oh. <laughs> um, Tom Petty. <laughs> quiet Night In or Exciting Night Out? Uh, quiet Night In. And you kind of touched on this one earlier, so I have a feeling... What it's going to be, but 90s country or current day country? 90s. And this is a classic West Virginia dilemma uh, without taking into account the recent weather conditions. Uh, if you're vacationing to one classic West Virginia resident destinations, do you go to Myrtle Beach or Pigeon Forge? 
Pigeon Forge. <laughs> same, same. There's something about Tennessee, even the touristy parts, it's all just drenched in like culture and this old world musical thing. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. And now they're allowing the acoustic acts um, up on that. Anna, I'm going to totally butcher this in pronunciation, but Anna, Anna Kiska, the thing that you ride the ski lift up onto the mountain. Yeah, they have yeah. acoustic acts up there all the time now. In uh, Gatlinburg, I want to say, or is there a Pigeon Forge? Yeah, it's, it's down in Gatlinburg. It's been a while since I've been out that way. And I think that is actually all I had. Uh, but thanks so much for awesome. taking the time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you too. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Uh, what is next for you? And what can folks look forward to as far as uh, upcoming shows or new music? Or is there anything you're working on? Yes, actually, I have a performance tomorrow um, in St. Albans. I'm doing. I'm headlining the Fall Y'all Festival. Right. And then uh, there's several dates following that, and everybody can check those out on my website. Um, we do have a Christmas music releasing. We've got some, like, live uh, performances that I'll be doing where people can, it's like on stage it, people can come in and view and things like that. And then next year we'll be releasing new music. That's exciting. And I'm a, I'm a Christmas music fan. A lot of people... They get annoyed with Christmas music. So that's exciting for me. I had to check that out. Oh, I love it. I love it. I turn Elvis, the Christmas Elvis album on, like, it'll be two weeks and I'll be playing in my car. Mm, <laughs> the kids will be like, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I will let you go. I'll let you get back to it. Uh, thanks so much again. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Do the same. Bye-bye.